I built this table just seven months ago and it's all cherry except I put in this stripe of maple down the middle. I thought it would be kind of cool. I do put cherry and maple together. I've done it many times and generally I like a contrast but it's just not working for me and I've got the time right now so I'm going to cut it out and put in some cherry. And I've got this piece of cherry that I'm going to prep for the replacement. As you can see this piece is plenty long enough and it is a little more than an inch and a quarter wide so it should have plenty of width and of course it is far thicker than the inch and a half tabletop. So let's start with joining it down and let's have a look. Now like a lot of guys, I generally run a combination blade in my table saw. It does most things well. But I'm going to switch out to a nice glue line ripping blade that I have. Because <clears throat> I want to get the, the best possible cut. Because I want, I mean, the rest of the tabletop is already finished. So you really want it to uh, match up nicely. when you're gluing it in. My joiner blades are actually getting a bit dull, so this blade is, actually gives a, a nicer finish. So I'm actually first gonna rip it probably to inch and three quarters. And then I'll flip it over and do it again at an inch and a, the, the final inch and a half, and then I'll get the, the best face possible. And I will also be uh, ripping the thickness. I then switched back to my combination blade and I'm gonna use that with my cross cut sled to put a nice clean end on this replacement board. So with all that prep work, I have a replacement board that is the exact right thickness to replace this strip as well as the thickness of the top. And um, yeah, I think it's time to cut the top up. All right, let's get these table clips out. And yeah, I need the ripping blade again, and I don't know what I was thinking. I should have just left it in for that one little cross cut. But anyways, that's done. So, if you've been paying attention, you've already realized my mistake. Table is 16 inches wide. I've already cut a piece to replace it, and I've made that the exact right thickness of the maple but I have to cut the maple out and well, I'm probably going to cut some of the cherry at the same time because yeah, we'll have to see. I'm going to do my best to just shave it right along the edge of the maple there and maybe not nibble into the cherry more than a millimeter or something really small, but we'll see. I might end up having to remake that piece that I cut. We'll see. We're going to um, line this up. right with the edge of the maple and hopefully I'll just be able to swap this around and use the same setup when I cut the other side but we shall see measure twice nope more 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 more
here we are. One table split apart. Uh, let's see. That is, oh yeah, that's maybe, it's a little less than the 16 inches wide here if I do this, but not enough to be noticeable. We are going to go with that. I do not have a wide planer. I don't have a wide belt sander. Uh, this is 16 inches wide. It's too wide for what I've got in the shop. I need to have an absolutely perfect top when I connect this. So I'm going to use my dowel max jig here. This, uh, some, dowel, some doweling jigs, they will index, they will run a line of dowels down the center. This jig indexes off one face, so all the dowels are offset from the same face. So I will offset everything from this face when I put in the dowels, and that will force this to be perfectly aligned when I glue it up. You could get the same with a domino or a biscuit, I find. A biscuit joiner would work, but I think th there's a little bit more slop in the biscuit. I mean, by design, it gives you a little bit of adjustment wiggle room, but the, this dowel does not have that. It forces that in. And that's why I cut this end on, the one end on this board, I cut it in because the dowel jig also indexes off the end. So I'll be starting at one end, drilling holes, and I'll be working my way along the board, putting holes every, every few inches in chunks. No, no surprise, I used dowels when I built the thing in the first place for aligning that maple strip that we cut out. So there's remains of the old dowels buried in the table. So we'll line this up flush with the end and clamp it down. There we go. And in case you're wondering, you know, if you are using this for joinery structural, that's where you have all these other holes for. I'm just I'm only using it for alignment. So I'm just putting one in here and I'm going to slide it along and then I'll use the, this little alignment post to move it down the table and, and then down to the next spot. And then we took the top out and we fitted in the filler strip and you'll notice the jig is turned around because again, I'm indexing off the top. So when the, this is the top and we're indexing off what's gonna be the top. I also had to lift it up a bit cause it's just a bit on the thin side. So I have it propped up on some bits of scrap plywood here cause otherwise the jig would hit the tabletop. Again, line it up with the end, make sure everything is snug and matching holes. So at the end, And then move it on down and so on and so forth. And I'll skip to the end now. So after drilling all the holes, I have some test dowels and I make sure everything lines up and it is perfectly flush here, which is what I'm looking for. Sticks out at that end, but this is the end that we are indexing off. So here again, it is perfectly flush. And then I did the same on this one so we can proceed to the gluing. One, two, three. Funny thing is, right now it looks almost the same because I've got seven month old cherry with finish on it against brand new cherry with no finish on it. But after the glue is dried, I will clean it up and I will be sanding down the entire surface. So hopefully we'll start again with the same color. 
I need to get rid of this little nubbin here and I have a flush cutting saw but I'm gonna give it a try but this is really meant for like smaller things but oh well it is cutting fairly aggressively looks like we'll be okay how are we doing pretty good a little bit of sanding we'll take that out on the other side There we go. Well, it worked. Less than five minutes total. And board is sticking up just a bit. So I'm going to uh, take it, take it down. This is just the bottom. And no doubt the bottom definitely needs to be refinished. Just gonna sand that right back to bare wood. And it is now time to uh, break out the podcast or the music because there's probably an hour or so of sanding ahead of me. So I've done a lot of sanding and I've done a lot of thinking. I started at 80 grit, but I very quickly went to 40 because I wanted it, I wanted to bring, bring this original surface right back to bare wood. And the longer I sanded, the more frustrated I was getting because there's still a significant color difference. And I sanded and I sanded and then I've set it aside and it's been most of a day as I've been pondering a couple of ideas. These two boards, this was from one slab, one tree, so obviously the color is the same. This was just a random piece of cherry I just grabbed in the corner of my shop and I just bulled ahead with it thinking, oh, this is going to be a quick, quick project, um, but I'm not liking it. Uh, one thing I've considered doing is treating this with lye. Um, before I got into YouTube, you'll find, you can find an article on my website. Um, I, I did an experiment with lye. You can use lye to accelerate the darkening, the natural darkening of cherry. Um, lye is a caustic substance. I'm not recommending you do it. Just do your research. Be careful. And I did that in, and, and I was able to darken cherry. So I thought, well, maybe I could try just darkening this strip down the middle. But it still is, I mean, it's only an accelerant. It's not, it's not, I mean, no guarantees. And, um, and really, I have a table saw and I have tools and cutting a thing in half is something I've done before and it's something I can do again. And just uh, earlier off screen, I went looking through my cherry stash and this time I grabbed the darkest one I could. Now there's a lot of just grime and dust on here, but I grabbed the darkest board I had and I took the block plane and I took a few swipes and I'm like, okay, I'm getting the color that I want now. And so I cut a chunk of that and I've just, I've got it to the proper height and the proper thickness. And yeah, take a look here. And I think that is a much, much better color match. I'll be much happier with this. It also helped my decision that right there, I did not get a really good glue joint. And also up here, noticeable gap right there that I would have had to deal with with sawdust or something. And so I'm just gonna cut that away. And so I was just talking to my wife and I was saying, it's kind of funny. Like um, if you go to my previous video, I built this table based on a woodworking school project that my dad had done 65 years ago. It was a woodworking class he took shortly after he was married. And so it had a lot of, you could see that in the project. Now that you know that you could see, oh, there's all kinds of joints and joinery and, and stuff. It was clearly meant to, to teach you something. So I find it kind of funny that here I am having my own learning experience here. I should have been a little bit more discerning on the piece of cherry that I use. And well, sometimes you have to go back to the drawing board. So. I'm going to spare you that because, yeah, this is going back to the table saw, cut it in half again, carefully, 
uh, redowel everything and re-glue it up and we'll connect again after that. And this is a much better color match. I'm very glad that I took the effort to do that. It's been cut apart, refitted, doweled, glued in, sanded, sanded, sanded again, uh, 80 grit, 150 grit, 180 grit, and I am now ready to actually give it another dust and then it's on to the finishing. And just like before, I'm using the same finish, which is a Minwax oil modified polyurethane. And here we go. Yes. Pretty good color match. That's what I like. That's why I started this process. Now this was the back. The top is the show face. Yes, there we go. That is much, much better. That's what I was looking for. Just one complete cherry top. Okay, two hours and then we can get on to the second coat. And here it is after four coats of polyurethane the color is looking so much better. So let's get it put back together. It is interesting, even after all that sanding down to 40 grit that I did, I can still see the faded marks where the base was attached. So I can just line it right back up. And of course, all the mounting holes are still there. Well, except for the ones on the side because of the strips, but put the clips back in. So there you go, a little bit, well, a lot more work than I anticipated when I started it, but I think the end result, the end result turned out great. All right, guys, that's about it for this one. If you want to know more about the table, you can watch this video that I'll put right there and you can watch me build it. There's a matching smaller table that nests underneath it that my dad built 65 years ago. And there's plans for both of those and you can see that down below in the links. And we'll see you next time.